The next project is also located in Jakarta. It's an uh, interior project as well, but there's an architecture part in it too. So it's located in an area called Block M. Uh, it's an old neighborhood in Jakarta. This area became popular in the 80s because and some people call it Little Tokyo, Jakarta Little Tokyo. And um, during that time, uh, the business booming and then a lot of uh, renovations here. So most of the people, uh, most of the buildings that were built in 1950s got covered with more like a uh, 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 more like aluminum uh, uh, panel facade and more extravagant. Um, so um, it was really popular, but then uh, slowly this area because people really don't go to this area anymore because it's a bit unsafe, you know, and then a bit uh, dirty, unorganized. It's a bit blight. Um, so uh, we want to use this project. I know it's a small project, but we want to take part of this kind of like revitalization of, of this area. So uh, some people already built like a larger scale uh, uh, pilot project here to revitalize this area. But I think we want to take part also with our little project. So this project is located in like in the shop house. It used to be a um, massage parlor. So uh, um, um, then uh, we we want to like the idea is what, what we do here, you know, like because the context, you, the context here, you have buildings from the 50s, 60s. And then you have other buildings which are like super new and extravagant, like with color slides, with the um, with the I don't say the signage, crazy signage here. But then our uh, we want to do something more subtle, so um, we just want to return the, the facade to the to its original state, and we want to keep the condition of the building as as is basically. So this is the, the picture of the, um, the, the demolition plan, like a demolition. So we want to use like um, the architecture element, the existing architecture elements as much as possible. And um, because the function before was the master parlor, so they closed off all the facade yeah. here. So we want to open it again. So, to, so the inside and the outside can have more uh, connection, visual connection at least. So this is the uh, kind of the early uh, uh, visualization that we did. So um, the, the the strip outside this building is really kind of like lively, a lot of activity here. But then most of the buildings in the area are literally closed off. So there's a clear dip distinction between inside and outside. And um, for this, for our project, we want to have more uh, buffer. You know, we want to tie the project our project more to the uh, to the city to the fabric existing fabric. That's why we try to kind of like open up the facade more to create more like a semi outdoor space inside so that people can still feel that even though you're inside the building, you're still part of, of the city, of the, of, the, of the outside, of the street life. And um, typically we, when we design and then we draw the construction documents and then we give the contractor they, and then they execute it. But then in this project, we kind of like, um, we stop it like in the middle of the construction because sometimes we see like, oh, okay, we see value during the construction that we didn't expect before, you know, like like the wall, because this building has been re been renovated for, I don't know, four or five times. Then every every renovation, they paint the wall differently. You know, like you, so you see, when you scrape the wall off, you see there's like a pink paint here. You have, you see like a bit like a neon green here, and. A, dark green so we see a value in this and we want to keep it yeah. as part of the future wall of the project so we want people to feel the history of the uh, of, of this building you know by looking at the paint and also when we remove like the the, the stair like the, the old stair we want to kind of like leave the the the, the, the i don't know, say the the mark on the wall here as a part of kind of like the the aesthetic of the building yeah. And the decaying paint, even the decaying paint of the uh, the floor slab, the concrete slab, we also want to leave it just to show that um, this building has uh, it's it's aging. Basically, it's 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 been there for like it's almost fifty years. So yeah, back to the, um, the 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 urban context again. So typically, all the buildings are like you have distinction between the interior and exterior here. Indoor, outdoor, but then in our case, we want to create a buffer here. So this is the ground floor. You have buffer here, which is 
um, um, we want it to be more like a outdoor, feel outdoor. So, and then this is the real interior. This is the uh, dining area. Also on the second floor, uh, we set back even more to create a kind of like the outdoor bar. It's inside the building, but no AC. So it's, it's basically practically um, uh, naturally ventilated. Then this is the, and this is like convertible uh, door where you can kind of like make the whole space into like a semi outer space. And this one is the um, uh, private uh, dining area. So basically, um, we also try to reduce the, 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 the use of energy here because, um, uh, uh, I don't know, just to make it more efficient uh, to, to operate. So the AC area only like, almost like 60% uh, of it. And we, we let the, uh, the rest uh, naturally ventilated because this strategy is not really popular in, in Jakarta because Jakarta is hot basically. So no one is typically, they don't want to use uh, other space. But then um, we tried, you know, like, and I was, I was uh, grateful that the client kind of like agree with, with, with our proposal because it was, it's quite risky when you have a hot, uh, kind of like a dining area. No one really wants to eat there. Yeah. So, um, but then um, after like several weeks of operation, now actually the outdoor area is more popular than the indoor. Uh, what about the nice life? Like, uh, do they have the nice life in that area? You mentioned it wasn't that uh, like safe area. What about now? Now it's getting it's it's getting better, and um, um, this area become destination in Jakarta. So, um, with when we did this project, there were also other four or five projects in this like a, a parallel to this project, you know. And um, with this project also like a built and developed, this area become um, like a safer mm, because um, I don't know. Um, yeah, it changed a lot. I I, I wouldn't say gentrified, but then. Um, Yes, um, people start getting job here, you know, like there's a lot of restaurants and hotels, you know, like, and um, uh, people start to understand that they have to take care of their neighborhood. When they take care of the neighborhood, people will come. When they, they become mobbed asking for money or something, no one will come to your neighborhood. So they start to understand that, you know, so um, I think the area, the whole area becomes better. Yeah, exactly. One of the power of, of the architecture is basically that, like when you make these open spaces with much more light in the, in what, the area doesn't change, like without a doubt. Yeah. yeah, but then we also a bit careful about like doing something that is too different, you know, because um, we could have like created something that is too alien, you know, like 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 crazy that attract people to come, you know, but I don't think that's kind of responsible, you know, because we also want people to have, because this area is like a, people have sentimental uh, feeling about this area. So we don't want to destroy that too, you know, we still want to mm -hmm. go along with the, with the old, you know, uh, order basically. Yeah. Yes. And um, this one is the entrance of the building when you kind of like approaching the, 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 the indoor area, indoor dining area. So you see that the outdoor, we still want to ha uh, have that kind of outdoor quality. That's why we use kind of like a gravel, like a like, like landscape material here. And for this project, we also want to use more like off the shelf materials. So we try to limit customization. So as you can see here, we use like uh, some uh, really simple materials that um, is more modular, like a cable tray. You know, you have like um, uh, steel grating and um, um, like aluminum grid ceiling. So we, because uh, because of the budget and also time for the construction, so we use everything is like um, we don't do like customized um, uh, um, materials. So yeah, I mean, again, this one is the, the, the semi-outdoor, the, the buffer space. And then this is the stair leading to the second floor, to the, the outdoor bar. And the red, the red floor here is basically the border between the outdoor and the indoor, basically. And you can also see this, uh, the wall that I mentioned before, you see the, the, the old walls. And we try also to kind of like uh, to organize the MEP, the conduit and everything, so it doesn't really destroy it because 
we don't put ceiling or anything here, so we want to show that the MEP also well coordinated, so it become part of the uh, the, the design. And a uh, few of the inside of the uh, level one uh, dining area, so um, use basically um, really simple uh, material. We use MDF for the table. We use like a slotted angle, and then it's everything is really easy to build and fast. Uh, we use like an aluminium like a grid ceiling which is a uh, modular and um, and then we basically we want to kind of like pair the existing with our new intervention. So the new intervention and the existing should coexist. Basically, we don't want to modify or something. We just want to put them together side by side so people can appreciate what's new and what's uh, old. And um, we treat this, uh, the furniture of this project as an architecture, so we don't do, we don't bring, we don't ask like a craftsman or like a interior, like a workshop to do the furniture, but we ask the construction worker to do the furniture. That's why we we do something simple that that even any construction worker can build. So we use like a MDF top with the slot of angle, and they just build it on site. So all the furniture, almost all the furnitures are built on site by those workers. You can see on the right, like the, the, the workers are like doing like mock up for the bench, you know, so like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because before when we have drawing and everything, they separate, you know, like uh, the construction uh, on site and they also send something uh, to the workshop or uh, and then some to the craftsman or we buy some of the loose items. You know? So, But in this case, we, we do everything on site and, and, and it's quite an interesting experience because you have to be there and you have to like, check the mock-up and tell them what to do, basically, because they don't have any experience with furniture um, production, basically. And um, you can also see that we use kind of like the, the off of the shelf material, like the, uh, the, the steel grating here. We, uh, we used it um, uh, along with the gravel here for the, on the first floor uh, for the service. And we kind of use the same thing for the ramp outside. And then we kind of like uh, we cast it with concrete and we polish it. So basically, we use the same material but in different ways here. And when we use the, this kind of material, we want to show it as is, like the ceiling. When we use gypsum, we show like all the uh, the, the the treatment here, the compound here. We we show it as is, and we we don't cover it with paint again. And also the 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 the, the cable uh, tray just as is. We just put it on the table at, for for a bar table basically. And um, this one is the view of the second floor, the the, the buffer, the semi outdoor the bar, semi outdoor bar. So the quality you want to achieve is like um, you want to have like a landscape feeling, you know. So we put like a a, a cast concrete planter box here with with all these uh, tropical plants and a row of uh, table which can be uh, rearranged for a different occasion. And this is the main bar; is a bit elevated. Because um, for piping and uh, all this MEP stuff, there's a, you have to have certain kind of like extra height here. That's why it's a bit high here in, in the in the in the bar. But um, yeah, so uh, at night usually this area is more popular because you can convert it into like a, like a, a dense uh, area, not dense, but like more like a, a more casual bar. You know, people can stand and can talk. Uh, can you can also invite DJ in this area too. And um, we also want to have a continuation from the uh, outside in. So um, that's why these planters are like uh, going all the way uh, from outside into the building, into the indoor area. And also the, 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 the array of the, array of the uh, table also kind of like in linear, continuous linear uh, order. And on the left side, you see the, uh, the, the, private, the private dining area. So we also use um, the uh, PVC strips, like uh, this yellow strip that you you see it in the uh, warehouse or in the uh, 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 what else? Yeah, factory as just for like a visual barrier from a uh, dining area with the private area here. This view on the inside, we use the, the material consistently, like the, the MDF, the gypsum, the grid ceiling and um, this room is convertible, so you can use both rooms together or you can kind of like close it off. So this kind of, uh, uh, this is the 
roll, rolling door basically. So when you want to use only one space, you pull down the rolling door and then you just close it off, become like a one smaller space. And uh, last but not least is the facade. So after we kind of like take out all those aluminum panels, you see like the original building from the 1960s. And um, uh, we kind of like, basically, uh, again, as I mentioned, all this new in in intervention basically coexists with 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 the uh, with the original uh, the existing building. So we don't really want to change the existing building that much. So um, yes, um, this is the final slide from me. Amazing, Eric. What about the using different color in the interior part? Like it was like each place color zoned, or it was based on their brand or anything special? Mm. Yes. Correct. Actually, uh, it was the brand. So um, we received the when we received the brief for the project, we also received the branding uh, uh, package. So we have to kind of like follow. You know, like they actually they want to do like a, a kind of like a little color like uh, decoration here and there. But then uh, for us, maybe it's good if we can use that color as kind of like uh, part of the illumination. So at night. When we don't don't want to be too bright, we can turn off like the the, the overall lighting and then just keep like um, this light box. So the space becomes like red and then yellow and then green. That was uh, um, that's how they use it in daily basis. Usually they turn off like the uh, like the the overall illumination and just keep like the red and the green. So it becomes more uh, it it helps the ambience for the bar actually. Yes, exactly. Yeah, um, you have a uh, one more question, Mari. You want to ask? Oh, uh, no, I just remembered we interviewed an abstract artist, and we had this conversation about how you can how this like different layer of paint on the wall oh, reminds yeah. you of uh -huh. the aging, and how you can make yeah. this memory feeling in the people. Yes, there's a nostalgic effect about it, which. Uh, like me, I'm a. I guess I, I like those. I'm a sucker for nostalgia, so I really like those um, peeling off of paint, and it shows the history. Yeah, yeah, and this is exactly like such a great thing to use when it comes to the renovation project. Many people think that they have to renovate everything, like demolish every part and make new things and like change it completely. But sometimes you can use this little feature to make like this great ambience in the place and uh yeah you know what i what i really like about this is that you consider this as you mentioned from the start that this is like a social responsibility and the fact that you set you had that set back on the front and also on the upper floor uh i think it really shows that you really consider the the context and the community because I, I can imagine like normally some would like prefer to occupy all the space so they, they get all the maximum dining uh, seating space. But uh, in this case, the, the fact that you consider that uh, shows the sensitivity to people, which uh, I really like. And uh, also, the I, I think what I also um, noticed that the space itself is kind of less intimidating. Uh, I can only assume that because you consider the, the the community because it is in itself like not like a high very high end community mm -hmm. so has that been really considered during the design stage or like it just came to you or was that like part of the brief or is it like really part of the of your decision making to make it uh, more fit in the community mm -hmm. actually the client i think client really play a big role on this project too because the client itself uh, it's like a consortium. It's like a community, basically. So, um, they own they own uh, like few restaurants before, but, but and and uh, almost in all the restaurants they kind of involve community. So, uh, I think that helps a lot. Helps us a lot too when we develop this project because we always think of think about them. You know, like what if uh, there's community? Uh, which community we want to kind of like invite to this uh, uh, restaurant? Basically, all communities. Right. So, but then, um. Because um, uh, we, they always remind us actually, like uh, okay, the stakeholders are not only one, but like it's bigger stakeholder, you know, like uh, so it's a group. So, and um, um, we learn a lot from them, you know. And then when we design this project, we we kind of like we think this space 
is not only for like a small number of people and more exclusive, but we think that this space is is more um, uh, how do you say like organic. Sometimes you can sit on the table, but sometimes we can just like uh, put this table on site and they can just like uh, stand and then drink. So it's more casual and almost there's no rule, you know, like because in like a fine dining restaurant, there's rule, you know, that you follow, you enter the restaurant. But but for this restaurant, because we learn from the client, the client are like more free and more like unedited, you know. So we also want to create something that is kind of like catered to that kind of market, you know. So for us, sometimes we don't have to create something that is like too, com let's say too comfortable, too exclusive, that people will stay there for like hours drinking like uh, cocktails. But this bar is for beer and then people can, even they can like stand up on table. Sometimes when there's occasion here, people stand up on table and they dance, you know, like for like a freely, you know, and and, and that's like, like amazing scene for, for, for us because for our architects, sometimes we plan, we plan something to be used in certain way, but then in a reality, they, they, they will use it in their own way, you know, and, and we learn a lot from their, their, that and we kind of like adapt it in our project yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you also, yeah, you put your touches of design in the, in the space, which makes it more wonderful. And even designing the whole, like, uh, and doing the whole furniture of this place, like you make it such a budget friendly project and yet you pay attention to the, every single little detail in the... Yeah, yeah talking about uh, budget, was there like a really budget constraint or... or There, there is budget constraint, yes. And um, um, budget and so time constraint because yeah. this one is... Uh, we, so we rent, the, we, the places they rent, so there's uh, like a time grace period for the construction and then budget is like, it's also limited, you know, like, so we have to think about like what materials that has, that needs less finishing, less like customization and fast. That's why uh, we chose these materials basically because it's really fast. Basically you just bolt it and you do it on site. And um, um, during the construction, all those construction workers, they, they, they sleep here basically, it's become their house. So um, they, I don't know, they maybe I, they work twenty four hours. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Maddie, you have final questions before? Uh, we... Eric, do we have another project to talk about today? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't um prepare the um, no, 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 it's the, okay, um, it's okay. The architecture, but um, yeah, it's we fine. we we have some project. Hopefully, yeah. we can, uh, we can do we... another interview in the future. I mean, we'd love to. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we have some projects. Hopefully, in the future, will be uh, built. Yes. I think th there's one one interesting one that I can share, but mm -hmm. um um maybe on the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. And I have some general question, Eric. When it comes to the renovation project, what was the like? What's your process like? How you approach to the old building? Like, was What's the first thing that's come to your mind? Uh, for me, uh, for us, we always want to see the value of the existing buildings first. You know, like either it's like a like intrinsic value or like something that you can uh, get it right away from the shape, from the color of uh, of the building, the typology. But uh, we always want to find what's what's like a, what's the value of the building first because. Um, our way of doing it is not by destroying the like the existing one. We always want to show what's what's in it. And um, when we approach the project, renovation project, usually we have nothing in our mind, so we keep it blank. So uh, it's more like we adapting. We see what's there, and then we adapt. Then we see another thing when they kind of when we see walls, we don't know what's inside. Maybe it could be structure, could be anything else. We don't know. And after they kind of like tear down the wall, we, we start to see what's in it. And then something, sometimes you find something interesting in it. And then we, we want to use that as an element in our design. So we, the way we approach the project, always we don't want to rush into conclusion. We always want to see the process first, you know, like uh, uh, along the way, we might find something more interesting than our own design. So yeah, yeah, but, there's not yeah. so much we can do, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's a, I think it's a, one of the good moves that you uh, half you said that like halfway on the construction you stop and then mm. you 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 analyze what needs to be done. I think that's a proper way because you know, like not everything can be decided on the paper, right? Mm. Yeah. And and you get many new ideas during the construction phase. Like yeah. 
you you start doing this and you say, oh, what about this? What about this? Like, like you develop the project yeah. during construction, basically. Yeah. yeah. That's the luxury of having a practice in here in Indonesia because um, maybe when we work in, in in Hong Kong or in other country, you know, like the liability is really it's, it's it's liability is higher, you know. So uh, yeah. when if you don't have luxury of like this, you know, like you cannot really just change the materials on site and then change the, yeah. the, the direction like any time. But then uh, for this, we were lucky that we, we have the kind of uh, luxury of doing that, you know, so. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I was just thinking the same because similar to here in the Philippines, we could also relate because the construction isn't that fast. But at the same time, I kind of saw that as a, like an advantage because you get to like uh, make decisions while during construction and then change something. Yes. And they don't really like, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And doing experiments. So uh, I think that I appreciate after I went back to back to Indonesia is like you you have the story of doing experiment as well because um, sometimes we don't have this we want to achieve a certain like I don't know uh, 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 quality but then you don't have the resource like the, the same materials as as, the, as like the one in Europe or in, in, in other more like developed you know countries so you, you use like things that you already have here sometimes it's like the substitute. But yeah. then you do experiments, you know, like to achieve the same quality. So uh, I think that's uh, you, you can you can do that experiment here and, and, and we're quite happy with that.